So I lost the phone I normally record things on, so I'm going to try recording this on the computer and see how well it does quality-wise and hope that it's it's good. Um, so, welcome to my channel. It's Monday, so it's True Crime and Makeup Monday. Today's story comes with a trigger warning, as usual. Necrophilia, rape children, crimes against children, um, murder, yeah. the usual. <laughs> Today's story takes place in Southern California. Patrick Wayne Kearney, also known as the trash bag killer and the freeway, freeway killer, is an American serial killer and necrophile who murdered a minimum of 21 young men and boys throughout Southern California between 1962 and 1977. Kearney is one of three men referred to as the freeway killer, the other two being William Bonin, which I did a segment on him, and Randy Kraft, also did a segment on him. All three killed similar victims in the same areas. Oh, in this in the same general time span. Uh, Patrick Wayne Kearney was born on September 24th, 1939, as the oldest of three sons, and was released in a reasonably stable family of a middle-class background. As a thin and sickly child, he was often a target for bullies at school who beat him up frequently and berated him as a queer, despite his supposed interest in girls. In his teens, he became withdrawn and harbored fantasies about killing personal enemies, often ending in Kearney skinning them alive. I, mean, I was bullied, but I don't think like that. Like, damn. This escalated real fast. In addition, he developed sexual fantasies revolving around domination and began engaging in bestiality when he was 13. Fortunately, we're not going to get into that because that's just a big no-no in YouTube land. Um, yeah. <laughs> Born in East Los Angeles, California, Kearney also lived in Texas. He returned to California to... He returned to California following a brief marriage that ended in divorce and eventually worked as an engineer for Hughes Aircraft. It was from his experiences in his early years in California that Kearney cultivated the skill as a gay pickup artist. Kearney mostly sought out partners in San Diego and Tijuana, Mexico, where he used his fluency in Spanish and keen interest in Latin American culture as a basis to connect with potential partners. Kearney claimed to have killed his first victim, a hitchhiker he picked up and murdered in Orange, California around 1962. And it did say orange, but for some reason I feel like it was supposed to be like Orange County. But I, I don't know. It, it did say orange. So, Californians, let me know if that is accurate or correct. Um, he claimed several more victims, mostly transients, before moving to Rod Redondo Beach near Los Angeles in 1967 with a man named David Hill, who became his lover. As time passed, Hill and Kearney began to argue more often, and Kearney would go out for long, solitary drives in his Volkswagen Beetle, or his truck. Now, when I was reading this, I was like, okay, so like this is like Ted Bundy before Ted Bundy. Because, if y'all recall, Ted Bundy also drove and got abducted his victims in a Volkswagen Beetle. Is this like the car of serial killers? Do, do, do we need to like call a Volkswagen and have a talk? <laughs> like what are you doing over there, bud? I'm just saying, like I, I feel like Volkswagen is like the the serial killer of cars, apparently. It's like the go-to. That's the one. That's what we're gonna take. 
I shouldn't say that, though, because I drove a Volkswagen when I was 16. Like, that was my first car. And, uh, I didn't grow up to be a serial killer. But that's, that's not the point. The point is, <laughs> I feel like all of these serial killers have at one point or another owned a Volkswagen car. And if that's the case, then what, what is wrong with Volkswagen? Like, do they have, like, this just deal going on? Like up with that. He would then pick up and kill young male hitchhikers or young men from gay bars. Kearney was, um, was a necrophile and was generally consistent in the manner in which he murdered his victims and disposed of their remains. So sorry. Being of slight build, Kearney was forced to resort to a system of subduing his victims that was unlikely to fail or create situations which could place them in physical danger or cause unwanted exposure to authorities. He was not sadistic and did not inflict pain on his victims as the other two freeway killers did, preferring quickness and efficiency. Well, Kearney did later confess to having mutilated his victims' bodies out of curiosity, such as cutting open one of their stomachs. He did so post-mortem and did not inflict any physical suffering. Kearney confessed to having committed his, hers, his first murder in spring of 1962. The victim's name is unknown, but he was confirmed to be age 19 and white. Kearney had convinced the male to take a ride on his motorcycle with him to a secluded area outside of Indio, California. When they arrived, Kearney shot the man in the head and sexually assaulted the body. It is unknown if the body was ever found, but Kearney did indeed confess to committing this murder and two additional ones during 1962. The second victim was the younger cousin of Kearney's first victim, who had witnessed Kearney drive away with the first victim. So, he killed the kid, and then he went back, and he killed the cousin of the kid, because the cousin had seen him, is essentially what that's saying. Um, as um, the first murder that Kearney confessed to and was convicted of occurred sometime around Christmas of 1968... While he was living in Culver City approximately one year after he and David Hill had taken residence together. Uh, the murder took place inside his Van Buren Avenue residence. According to Kearney, this victim, whose name, it, whose name is known as George, was lured into his vehicle in San Diego and taken to his home. Then shot in the head moments after entering the house. The victim was then dragged to his bedroom, bathroom where he was sodomized, then skinned and dismembered in the bathtub with an exacto knife. Kearney also ex extracted the bullet from the victim's head to ensure the murder would not be traced to him. He then buried the dismembered body behind his garage. Kearney did not kill for over a year following his murder, primarily out of fear that law enforcement would inquire about the disappearance of George. Years later, the identity of this victim has yet to have been discovered besides his first name sad. That's just sad. As time passed, Kearney greatly refined his modus operandi, which enabled him to carry out his crimes much more efficiently and frequently. Starting in 1974, Kearney is estimated to have committed murders on almost on an almost monthly basis. After picking up his victims along the freeway or at gay bars in his Volkswagen or in his truck, Kearney would typically shoot his victims in the temple above the ear with a during derringer. Sorry if I did get that right. Point twenty two pistol in his right hand while steering his car with his left hand and simultaneously monitoring the car's speed to avoid exhibiting any unusual behavior to potential witnesses. That's a lot. You're doing a little too much at this point. I mean. 
like, I don't know, I just wish that, like, serial killers had, like, some sort of, like, radar that you just knew who they were. I wish that was possible, but obviously it's not. <laughs> After murdering his victims, Kearney would leave the bodies slumped upright in the passenger seat and drive to a secluded area to sexually violate them. After copulating with his victims' corpses, Kearney would usually mutilate and dismember usually, um, sorry, would usually mutilate and dismember the remains of the hacksaw before disposing of them in various locations such as canyons, landfills, and along the freeways, usually in industrial trash bags. In some cases, Kearney disposed of the bodies in the desert where they would be consumed by carrion eating animals. Kearney would sometimes drain the victim's blood to eliminate odor and would also sometimes bathe the body parts prior to disposal to minimize the presence of dried blood and eliminate fingerprint evidence. Sometimes Kearney would beat his victims after they were dead. He preserved beating his dead victim as a carthotic exercise and a means by which he could effectively vent suppressed anger and acquire a sense of power. Often the victims resembled people who had bullied him in his childhood. Although Kearney primarily preyed on young men, there were known child and adolescent victims as well. Kearney's youngest victim was Ronald Dean Smith, five, who disappeared in Lenox, California on August 24th, 1974. His body was discovered in Riverside County on um, October 12, 1974. Merle Hondo Chance, eight of Venice, vanished on April 6, 1977, while supposedly riding his bicycle in the vicinity of Kearney's place of uh, residence. I'm sorry, place of work. Kearney claims to have smothered the body, taken his body home overnight, and later disposed of the remains of the Angeles National Forest off Angeles Crest Highway, approximately 11 miles north of Al Alt Adina. Chances decomposed remains were discovered on excuse me were discovered on May 26, 1977. Merle Chance was Kearney's last known victim. <laughs> 